All right, hello everyone, and welcome to my lecture on anterior and medial thigh. My name is Jung Yoon, and I'm a fourth year medical student. So today's learning objectives are to learn about the bony landmarks of the hip bone and femur, learn about the movements of the hip and knee joints, learn about fascia lata and the iliotibial band syndrome, and learn about the muscles and nerve supply of the anterior thigh and medial thigh. So this is the pelvic bone. This, you can see the lateral view, and this is the medial view. And the pelvic bone is made up of three bones, the ilium, the ischium, which you use to sit on, and then the pubic bone. And these three bones fuse at the acetabular fossa, where the femur, the head of the femur will attach here. And important landmarks to know are the ASIS, which stands for anterior superior iliac, iliac spine, AIIS, anterior inferior, inferior iliac spine, because these give attachments to muscles and ligaments. So the anterior superior iliac spine attaches the inguinal ligaments as well as the sartorius muscle, and the anterior inferior iliac spine attaches the rectus femoris muscle, which is part of the quadriceps muscle. And on the medial side of this iliac fossa here attaches the iliacus muscle. And this iliacus muscle will join with the psoas muscle that come from the lumbar spine to form the iliopsoas muscle. Here we can see the femur, and femur is the longest bone in the body. It's comprised of the head, the neck, the greater trochanter here, which is the bigger, bigger portion, and the lesser trochanter here. There's a long bone. You can see the lateral epicondyle on this side and the medial epicondyle on this side. And there's a little groove here that is where the patella sits. So the lesser trochanter is the attachment for the iliopsoas muscle that I just mentioned. Because the attachment crosses the hip joint here, the iliopsoas is the muscle that is used to flex the hip. As for the greater trochanter, it provides attachments for the abductors and medial rotators of the hip. And from the posterior view, you have the linea aspera, which provides attachment for some adductors of the hip. Now, let's review some movements of the hip joint and the knee joints. So flexion is bringing your leg closer towards your body this way. And extension is the other way. For abduction and adduction, just remember, abduct is to be away from something. So you're abducting the leg, which means you're bringing the leg away from the body. And adduction is bringing the leg towards the body. For movements of the knee joint, bringing your foot or lower leg towards your butt is flexing, whereas the opposite is called extending. What you need to know is that the leg is comprised of three compartments, the anterior, the medial, and the posterior compartments. The anterior part, which is used to extend the knee, is innervated by the femoral nerve from L2 to L4. The medial thigh is used to adduct the hip and is innervated by the obturator nerve. The posterior thigh, which is on this side, is innervated by the tibial nerve and it's used to flex the knee. Now let's learn about the anterior thigh muscles. The anterior thigh muscles are a large group of muscles in the body which is comprised of the quadriceps femoris, commonly known as quadriceps, plus the sartorius. And as the name suggests quadriceps, quad meaning four, there's four muscle groups that attach to the patella. One is the rectus femoris, which originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine, and the three vastus muscles, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius, which is behind the rectus femoris muscle. One thing to note is that the rectus femoris muscle originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine, which sits at the hip bone. So if this muscle contracts, it will not only extend the knee, but also have some function in flexing the hip. And these quadriceps muscles are innervated by the femoral nerve, which comes from the posterior division of the ventral rami of L2 to L4. And another muscle that we need to look at is the sartorius muscle. Sartorius muscle originates from the anterior superior iliac spine and attaches to the medial part of the tibia. And the role of the sartorius muscle is it flexes and laterally rotates the hip and flexes the, the knee, and it gives you a sitting down position like this. This is also innervated by the femoral nerve. 
Now let's learn about the medial thigh muscles. So medial thigh muscles are comprised of the adductor muscles, adductor longus, meaning the long adductor, adductor brevis, meaning the short adductor, adductor magnus, which is at the distal part here, gracilis, which is a strap muscle that originates from the pubis and attaches to the medial part of the tibia, and obturator externus. The medial thigh muscles are responsible for adducting the thigh and it is innervated by the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve is the anterior division of ventral rami of L2 to L4. One thing to note is that the adductor magnus is innervated by the obturator nerve. However, there is a posterior side, which is the hamstring part, that's innervated by the tibial nerve. Now in this diagram, you can see the pes anserinus. Pes anserinus means goose foot and it is a group of three muscles that attaches to the medial part of the tibia here. First one is the sartorius tendon, which originates from the anterior superior iliac spine. The second is the gracilis tendon, which originates from the pubis here. And third is the semitendinosus tendon, and this comprises to make the pes anserinus. Next thing we'll review is the fascia of the thigh. So fascia lata basically means the deep fascia of the thigh. And in this diagram, you can see the gluteus maximus, which is the largest muscle in the body, combining with the tensor fascia lata muscle, which is a small muscle, and this combines to make the iliotibial tract, which is basically the thickened portion of the fascia lata. And this goes on distally to attach to the anterior lateral tibial tubercle, which is called the girdy tubercle. And clinically, Patients who run extensively can present with pain in this region, and that is called the iliotibial band syndrome, which is caused by friction of this IT band against the lateral femoral epicondyle here. Another thing to note is that the great saphenous vein drains most of the foot here and is located medial to the medial malleolus bone here. And this vein is important clinically because this vein is taken out to use for coronary bypass surgery. Another thing to know is the femoral triangle because there's a lot going on in this region. The femoral triangle is made up by the inguinal ligament at the top, the sartorius muscle laterally, and the adductor longus muscle medially. And this part is clinically important because it has the femoral vein, femoral artery, and femoral nerve. You can remember this by remembering the mnemonic VAN, V-A-N vein, artery, and nerve. In clinical settings, you're able to palpate this region, and if you feel pulsations, you know that you're at the femoral artery. So, with this landmark, you will be able to tell that the femoral vein will be on the medial side of the artery, and the femoral nerve will be on the lateral side. And the femoral vein is a great site for IV axis, so this is how it's applied clinically. Another thing to note is that there's a sheath that surrounds the femoral artery and vein and also has the deep inguinal lymph nodes, but the vein is outside of this femoral sheath. And this part here, which is where the deep inguinal lymph nodes are, is called the femoral canal. And the femoral canal is a potential space in which bowel can evacuate, in which it's called femoral hernia. Here, you can see that the bowel has evacuated out of the femoral canal. And this landmark is important because right next to it runs the inguinal ligament and you'll need to be able to tell whether it's an indirect hernia, a direct hernia, or whether it's a femoral hernia. Hello everyone, welcome to Virtual Reality. Here we have the 3D model of the lumbar spine, the sacrum, and ilium. And arising from the lumbar spine, we have the psoas major and minor muscles, combining with the iliacus muscle to form the iliopsoas muscle and it's innervated by the femoral nerve and the attachment of the iliopsoas muscle is the lesser trochanter of the femur so because it crosses the hip joint it will be used to flex the hip joint. Now let's look at the muscles of the anterior thigh. We have the quadriceps muscle which comprises of the rectus femoris vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius attaching onto the patella to make quadriceps. Here we have the rectus femoris muscle which originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine and because it originates above the hip joint this will also be used to flex the hip joint and extend at the knee joint. 
let's get rid of the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and we can see the vastus intermedius that's underneath. And all these muscles are innervated by a femoral nerve, which comes from the L2 to L4. We also have the sartorius muscle, which originates from the anterior superior iliac spine, attaching onto the medial aspect of the proximal tibia. And the function of the sartorius is to cross your leg uh, when you're sitting on the floor. And the attachment will join with other muscles to make the pes and serinus. Laterally, we have the tensor fascia lata muscle, which will become a thick band called the iliotibial band and attach onto the gerdes tubercle of the tibia. And the nerve supply of the tensor fascia lata is superior gluteal nerve. And keep in mind that the gluteus maximus will also join to make the iliotibial band, but the gluteus maximus nerve supply is the inferior gluteal nerve. The role of the tensor fascia lata muscle is to medially rotate and abduct the femur. Here we have the femur, and that's the hip joint I've mentioned. And if a muscle originates above and ends below the hip joint, then it is used to flex the hip, but if it doesn't originate above, it doesn't have any effect on the hip.